Today I'm going to show you some hidden tricks, features, and tips for the iPhone. One of my favorite is when you're scrolling down in an application and you want to reach to the top, you can just tap the top of the phone and it will scroll to the top. This works in any application as you're scrolling down and you want to reach to the very top, you just tap the top of the phone and it scrolls all the way up to the top. The next hidden feature I want to talk about is called reachability. It allows you to reach buttons at the top of the screen using one hand. You'll notice my thumb cannot select the TV shows button in the top right. But if I activate reachability by swiping down at the bottom here, it brings the TV shows button down to me. And that's reachability. It works within any app and you can just swipe down and reach buttons at the top of the screen just like that. I can hit the done button just by swiping down on the bottom of the screen and it brings the entire top half of the screen to the bottom where it's within my thumb's reach and I can use the application using one hand. Another cool feature is that you can swipe to go back. Now, of course they have back buttons, but you can just swipe the edge of the screen to go back. You can have Siri read your unread messages. Read my unread messages. Stan sent a new message. Are you Tony Stank? Would you like to reply? Yes. What do you want to say to Stan? Yes, this is Tony Stank. It's sent. That's all your messages. Inside of your iPhone, you can have nicknames for people in your contacts. So here with that Stephen Curry, we can go into the contacts and modify it and scroll down and let's add a field. We'll go, we'll select nickname and we'll type in splash. And now we've got Stefan Curry, Splash Brother. And it shows up his nickname at the top. You can now view the password of the Wi-Fi network that you're currently connected to. So if you ever forget the password or a friend comes over and they're like, what's the Wi-Fi password? You can now double check what it is by going into Wi-Fi, seeing which network you're connected to and pressing this blue information button and then tapping on the password option. This will activate Face ID or Touch ID and allow you to authenticate yourself. And once you do, it'll show you the password to the Wi-Fi network that you're currently connected to. This next tip has to do with the calculator app. Have you ever done a calculation and mistyped a number and then had to delete the entire number and start all over? Well, in the calculator app, you can swipe to delete digits. So if I want to do 500 times three and I accidentally type 5,002 instead of 500, I can swipe to delete that number two and still do my calculation without having to start all over. So we can try that again. We can do 600 times three, but if I accidentally hit you know, two other numbers, I can swipe to delete those numbers and continue my original transaction or uh, calculation without having to hit the clear all button. This next tip is handy when you're writing and you have got the keyboard open and you want to modify something and move your cursor. You can always tap to move the cursor, but this tip allows you to use the space bar to move the cursor. All you have to do is hold down on the space bar and drag and you can move it to anywhere you want just by dragging the space bar. So I'm at the very bottom, the end of the sentence. If I hold down the space bar and drag, I can go back up to the top and then make some edits here and hold the space bar and go right back down to the bottom. So hold the space bar allows you to move the cursor easily anywhere on the screen. In order to access Spotlight Search, you can swipe down anywhere on the home screens and access the Spotlight Search. You can also hit the search bar right here and it will pop up. But my favorite option is to just swipe down in anywhere on the screen and then open up an app. I can disable home pages by entering into the home edit mode. So I can edit the home screen and then go here, the bottom bar, I see I've got three pages. I can turn off page number three and page number two and just have one page. And now when I swipe over, it goes to the app library. So just like that, I have modified the amount of pages that are on my home screen. I can go back and turn them on and now I have three pages. So that's an example of how you can modify home pages on your home screen. Inside of the Photos app is a hidden photo library. All you have to do is just select photos. So say I want to hide these three photos. I can do that and then select the three dots and say hide. 
it will hide these three photos. They will be removed from my photo library, so they're no longer visible in the Photos app without authentication. You have to go to Albums, and you just scroll down here and you select Hidden, and it will authenticate with Face ID, and it will show you the hidden photos. So just like that, I have a hidden photo library within my Photos library. I've got four widgets on my home screen, and one hidden feature is I can enable stacks of widgets. I can combine all four of these widgets just by dragging them on top of each other. And just like that, I have a widget stack. Inside of Messages, you can filter unknown senders. You can go to the Settings, scroll all the way down to Messages, and scroll all the way down to Filter Unknown Senders. And this enables a filter option in the top left of your messages app and inside of it you can filter unknown senders unread messages see people that you know and also recently deleted messages but this is very helpful when you want to see which messages are unread and which numbers are unknown by default your control center only has a few options your flashlight the timer the calculator and the camera button but you can go into settings and scroll down to control center and customize it if you don't want those options you can hit the red minus button or you can scroll down and add options like the apple tv remote an alarm let's see what else do we have we can add notes we can add screen recording we can add text size wallet they have dozens of options here so now when you scroll down you have the tv remote the alarm notes screen recording text size wallet and you just tap on it and you can easily edit the options right there without having to go into the settings app so this makes it really easy to go into control center and add additional options for uh, the control center just by swiping down at the top right and getting quick access to these commands so that's Control Center and the options for more controls. Did you know you can share what's on your screen with Siri? Siri, share what's on my screen. To who? Stan. Ready to send it? Yes. It's sent. And just like that, Siri took a screenshot of what was on my screen, composed the message to Stan, included the screenshot, and sent it. Now, it's even cooler when you're on a piece of media or a website. You can say, share this. To who? Stan. Send it? Yes. It's sent. Now, Siri is smart enough to detect that I was on a website. It included that website URL in the message and then sent it off to Stan. So that's how you can use Siri to share what's on your screen. Inside of Safari, you can move the bottom address bar to the top by tapping the AA button right here and then tapping Show Top Address Bar. And it moves the address bar to the very top like it used to be in the older versions of the operating system. If you want to move it back down to the bottom, you just tap the AA button and then click Show Bottom Tab Bar and it moves back to the bottom. Some people like it at the top, some people like it at the bottom. Whichever one you prefer, you can now go into the settings inside of Safari, tapping this AA icon, and then tapping which one you prefer. You can FaceTime with Android users by going into FaceTime and creating a link. And then you can send it to anyone that has an Android phone and say, join my FaceTime. And just like that, it creates a FaceTime link. Inside of the Photos app, you have the hidden album underneath albums right here. So we can actually remove this hidden album from the utility section inside of the settings. If we go into settings and we scroll down to photos, we can remove the hidden album by unchecking show hidden album right here. And when we do that, it will remove the hidden album from the utility section, so it's no longer there. If you're browsing the internet or in an app and you wanna know what a word is, you can hold down on it and select look up and it will bring the dictionary up so you can see the definition of that word. And just like that, we can select any word here and it brings up the options here. We can scroll down and say look up and then it brings up the dictionary just like that. So that's really helpful if you want to look up a word and you don't know the meaning of it, you can just select it 
and then scroll over and then tap look up and it will bring you a dictionary app. If a contact is messaging you too much, you can go into messages, tap on their contact thread, and then tap on their name at the top, and you can hide alerts. That way, when they message you, you won't be alerted, you won't be distracted, and when you're ready to read their messages, you can just open up the messages app yourself and read all the different threads and comments and GIFs and emojis that they sent that were just blowing up your phone. So again, you just go into the message thread and you tap on their name and then you select hide alerts and then you'll no longer be notified when that person messages you. You notice when you're talking to Siri, you can't see in text what you're saying in real time. You can change that in the settings. So just go into settings, scroll down and select Siri in search and then scroll and select Siri responses, and then select always show speech. Now, when you're talking to Siri, the words that you're saying pop up at the bottom of the screen in real time, and you can see what she's hearing. With dictation, you can dictate and type at the same time. To activate dictation, you just press the microphone button in the lower right. I can type with my voice, This is pretty cool. If you're receiving too many notifications and don't want to receive any more from a certain app, you can swipe on that notification and select the options button. And when you do, there's an option to turn off notifications from that app. So I'm just going to press the turn off button and I'll never receive another notification from Twitter on my phone. I could do the same thing for YouTube here. I can scroll down, I can swipe, go to options and hit turn off. And that will disable all notifications from YouTube. And you can manage these notifications in your settings. If you go into settings and you go all the way up and to the top here to notifications, you can see all of the options based off the apps that you have installed and what their notifications are set to. So if I scroll down, I can find Twitter and you see that Twitter notifications are turned off. I can turn them back on and then select what type of notification I want. Whether I want it on the lock screen, the notification center or the banners, you can just select which ones you want and which ones you don't want, just like that. Now my favorite is the badges right here. If you ever seen the little red dot on the top of an app, and it's you know notifying that you have four unread emails or 3,000 unread emails. I personally do not like the badges. So I can come in here and turn off the badges and that dot will disappear off of the app. And it is the best thing for me because I have a clean phone without notifying me that I have 300 unread emails. So that's a really fun one if you want to come into your settings and select for messages and you can see badges are turned off there, mail notifications are turned off there. So depending on which app you want, you can turn on badges, you can turn off the different notification styles, whether it's lock screen, notification center, or banners. And I think it's really cool and a great hidden feature that most people don't know about that you can come in here and dictate how you're notified inside of an application. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more great content like this. I also encourage you to go to appfindvip.com and subscribe to our email newsletter to get the best mobile apps and games delivered to your inbox. Thanks for watching.